Hey what's up guys, in this video I'm going to analyze the stock of Kroger. Ultimately I'm going to make my recommendation on whether to buy it or not right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, I do a lot of investing videos on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, hit that subscribe button to check out more videos like this one. Alright, let's get started. All right guys, so this is Kroger's website. They are a grocery store chain. You can order online. They have a pharmacy as well. So, you know, pretty pretty straightforward company there. All right guys, here is Kroger's stock, currently trading at about $34 a share, giving it a market cap of about 25 billion. They have considerable short interest, close to 7.5% of their shares have been borrowed and sold short. They're yielding about 2.13%, which is not bad. As you can see, the stock has gone up about 15% in the past year. If we zoom out to the past 10 years, it's gone up about close to 200%. It's currently trading at a very attractive looking 10.17 times next period's earnings. Now, that doesn't automatically make it a good deal. We're going to have to look at the riskiness of the company, and we're going to have to look at the growth expectations of those earnings. So here is Kroger's balance sheet. Right away, I see there is some justification to trading for just 10 times earnings. What I mean by that is they, they have considerable leverage here with a liabilities to assets ratio close to 80%. When you look at their liquidity, the current ratio 0.83, that means their current assets are only 0.83 times their current liabilities. They're going to have to borrow more or perhaps issue equity or something like that to, to resolve that problem there. You always wanna have your current assets more than your current liabilities. Current ratio is above one. You know, that being said, in their industry, you're going to generally find lower current ratios, very low quick ratios. I'm not too concerned about the quick ratio, though, given their grocery store chain. Um, you know, their inventory sells really fast. Here's revenue growth over time for Kroger. I'm very impressed, especially for a company trading at just 10 times its earnings. You look at, they, they had about $90 billion of revenue in 2012. They're up to 130 billion. This growth in revenue has translated into a growth in profitability. They had just 602 million dollars in net income. Now it has grown to about close to 3 billion, a five-fold increase in less than a decade. If you like the video so far, please hit that like button. It helps me a lot. Here are their margins over time. You can see gross margin is, you know, ticking up just a little bit. Not much, but they're squeezing every ounce of efficiency they can out of it. Operating margins as well have gone up overall. They've been a little bumpy. They, they have been higher in some past years, but I think the general trend is upward, coming in about 2.9% most recently. All right, so speaking of margins, let's have a look at the DuPont analysis. You can check out my video on that description below if you don't know about it, but we're looking at return on equity, very important measure. How much net income did you generate given the amount of equity we've invested into the company as shareholders? Higher numbers are better, obviously. Very impressive ROE, very impressive, guys. Getting up to 45% in some years average of, I don't know, I want to say about 30%. Very good. It is unfortunately being propped up a little bit much by the leverage. Remember their balance sheet, they are highly levered. So that's a big part of their return on equity. But you know, nevertheless, for a grocery store, for their industry, they're actually doing very well on the other two components, what I would call organic profitability. Net income margin there, uh, their margins are growing getting up to about 2.3% most recently. I like to see that growth and because their margins are so small, if they can even grow by half a percent, that would increase their ROE dramatically. Um, where these kinds of companies really make their money is not with margins, it's more of asset turnover. 
So they don't really make money on each product they sell. They make a tiny amount, but they sell the crap load. So if you look at their asset turnover, it's, you know, it's at least three in most years. So for every dollar of assets, they're able to generate over three dollars of sales. That's really how they make their money. When I look at it as a whole, I'm pretty impressed. I like Kroger's business. One of the reasons many investors are interested in Kroger's stock is their dividend growth streak. They've been growing their dividend for about 14 years straight. The five-year growth rate is an average of about 11.4%, and they're really only paying out about 21% of what they earn, meaning they have a lot of room for further growth in that dividend. So while it only yields a little bit above 2% right now, People interested in a long-term investment can see the yield on cost easily growing to be very impressive in a number of years. All right, guys, so what does Kroger do with all the extra money? I mean, their payout ratio is very low. It has been very low, as you can see from this little chart here in, in blue. Well, they do a lot of share buybacks. So in green, we have dividends plus buybacks divided by net income. And, you know, this is a nice picture to see. They're not actually spending even 100% of what they make in the, in total here. They're still leaving room for reinvestment. But they are buying quite a few of their own shares back. Now, because they've bought so many of their own shares back, you know, this has led to share price appreciation. If you look at the number of shares here in 2012, it was about, you know, over a billion shares there. Now we are down to 761 million shares. So that is quite some shares that are missing there. And if that trend continues, each share of Kroger is going to be worth a heck of a lot. Okay, guys, so at this point in the video, I want to use an intrinsic valuation model to value Kroger stock. I'm going to go with the free cash flow to equity model. Now, to make the model work, we have to make a number of assumptions. We have to assume some kind of discount rate that reflects the risk of Kroger's cash flows. We have to estimate what those future cash flows are going to be. I'm going to walk you guys through my estimates. You can see how I get to where I'm, I'm going to. Uh, and then ultimately, we're going to come up with what is a fair value of Kroger stock. Okay guys, so before we jump into my vision for Kroger as far as their cash flows, I want to consider their reinvestment needs. They don't do any R&D, not a lot of uh, innovation in the grocery industry. As far as acquisitions, you know, they made one there in 2014. They had some kind of divestiture there in 2019. Overall, they don't really grow via acquisitions. In orange here, you see CapEx. Yeah, they have grown in that way. They've opened more brick and mortar stores. And so that is something to consider as we go forward is their, their reinvestment needs for CapEx. I will caution though, as they are not expected to grow much going forward, I'm not going to be using the same level of reinvestment that we used for the past 10 years when, when we saw Kroger experience that incredible growth. It's going to be much less. All right, guys, this is my most likely case for Kroger. I've plugged in revenue growth rates from analysts. So we have that going up to about, you know, the next five years. After that, we kind of have to put our own estimates. I'll say one and a half percent after that. And actually, after 10 years, I'm going to assume one and a half percent just forever. I think that's, you know, on the little more conservative side. That gives us a streak of revenues. To go from revenues to your net income, you need to know how much your your net income margin is. Yeah, we had 2.3%, I know, but I'm gonna plug in 1.9% as that is the past five year average. Again, a bit more conservative. That gives us a streak of net income. Now to go from net income to free cash flows to equity holders, I'm going to have to subtract reinvestments. This company will require some reinvestment. You know, you saw their working capital ratios, like current ratio. You see their leverage. I'd like to see them pay some down there. So I will calculate that even though they have, you know, pretty sluggish growth expectations there, 
They're not going to be opening new stores or anything. Not not many anyway. I will still expect some level of reinvestment. So I'm putting it at about 15%. And so that, that ends up being, you know, close to $400 million in the first year, for example. Uh, that gives me a streak of free cash flows to equity. Let's figure out the intrinsic value given this streak. All right, guys, so here's the stream of free cash flows to equity. I discount them back to present value with an 8% discount rate. I also have a terminal value. I am assuming that the free cash flows they're able to generate in that terminal year, year 11, I'm assuming they can grow that at 1.5% per year in perpetuity. So that gives me a terminal value of about $37 billion. I'm going to discount that back to present value as well. That gives me a total firm value of the following cash, about $2 billion. The free cash flows for the next 10 years, close to $15 billion. The terminal value, about $16 billion. So the company could be worth about $33 billion or about $43.24 per share. This is significantly below what it's trading for. We can even go in and modify some assumptions to be a little more strict and see what happens. Let's just change that discount rate. So if we bump up that discount rate to 10%, the fair value is still 3370 close to what it's trading at. So I mean really right now you're looking at about a 10% expected return. And that's even assuming, you know, to me a little more conservative assumptions there as far as the margins. So if we go back to our margins, remember I'm just assuming it'll stick at 1.9%. What if it can actually stay at the 2.3% there? If that's the case, the value changes. With an 8% discount rate, the company could be worth as much as $52 per share, roughly. Even with a 10% discount rate, the company is still going to be worth about $40.24 under this scenario. All right, guys, so here are my final thoughts on Kroger. This analysis was a relatively easy one. When we did the intrinsic valuation model, we came up with a value that was far above what it's currently trading for. So that makes it easy. I think it's definitely a buy. Um, we, you know, we have a big margin of safety there. Even when I went in and adjusted some of the estimates, went with a more pessimistic estimate for their margins, maybe used a higher discount rate, is still able to come up with values for the stock that are higher than what it's trading for. So look, I mean, to make it simple, you got a company trading for about 10 times earnings that is actually growing. They're actually still growing. Uh, for me, I'm definitely going to be buying some. You know, that being said, Kroger is kind of limited. You know, it is a grocery store chain. They're never going to be able to increase their margins by that much. They're not going to be able to, you know, leverage lots of users for their product like a lot of tech companies can do and, you know, double and triple their revenues. Uh, that's not really going to happen. Uh, but for me, it's, uh, you know, a pretty solid, stable, steady return you can expect from owning Kroger. And so I'm definitely going to be buying it. Let me know what you're going to do in the comments below. Thank you for watching.